Hey guys, welcome to the ultimate second gen Tundra head unit plus reverse camera installation. This is a joining 10.1 inch head unit as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The reason I chose this one is because of the physical volume knob. I don't have steering wheel control, so I needed something with an actual knob on here. This has it. It's going to include a bunch of other accessories with the head unit. You got front camera, rear camera, microphone. Uh, we got these wow, GPS adapters, 4G stuff, USB ports, extra USB ports, SIM card reader. You know, all the goodies. This will not be a step-by-step -step installation, but I will show you stuff as we go along. Also going to have this Ecoconut. Eco Konut, I don't know how you pronounce it, but this is a tailgate reverse camera. Got the wiring for it as well, so we're gonna put this bad boy in too and make sure that everything works together. Let's go ahead and start tearing apart the head unit on the truck and we can get this thing thrown in. First step we're gonna do is pop this panel out and you're just gonna put a little trim tool inside of here and pull on it. Next, you can take the ashtray out and then we're gonna work on this. So in this cup holder, there's going to be two tabs, one right here, one right here, and we're going to pinch these and then pull this main piece out. So I'll do that and then come right back. Just like that, after you pinch them, this entire thing will slide out. We could set this to the side. So once we pull that piece out, what we're going to have is this, and we're going to essentially squeeze and pull it out. And that's literally it. You just squeeze and bend it down just a tiny bit so that these little tabs on the top will unlock um, it's really self-explanatory but squeeze it from the middle and this will pop right out all right now we're gonna have four screws to remove there's gonna be one right here one right here you're gonna have one right up top here and you're gonna have one more in that same spot but it's gonna be right up top there it's hard to see but it is right there so remove those four screws next and then we'll pull this entire piece out so that way we can remove the HVAC controls without damaging or destroying anything. All right, now that we got the four screws out, we're gonna pull at each corner because there's four yellow clips and then we're gonna pull out this entire assembly. So I'm gonna pull, 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 and then pull it all out. All right, so here's that piece. I actually pulled it from the bottom and I'd use one of these trim tools and a microfiber so I don't damage anything and it came undone pretty quickly and this entire piece can just come out we could set this off to the side so now we have this undone and we can go ahead and pretty easily pull and disconnect this entire trim piece and then we'll start taking off the radio there's four clips one two three and four so now we have the HVAC controls off and there's only three clips to undo here uh, in terms of wiring and we pulled the wiring clips off and we can set this off to the side. Next up we're going to have four screws for the radio. We're going to have one, two, three, four way back here and these are going to be 10 millimeters so we're going to take these four off. Once those four screws are taken out, all you will have to do is just pull on it, start on this left corner, pull, and it will come out pretty easily. You can then go ahead and undo the three connectors and one radio antenna uh, plug, and that's going to be it. The head unit is now out of the vehicle. So here we have the head unit side by side, and the first thing that needs to be swapped over are these clips. So these clips will come off the stock head unit, and these are going to be going on to the original, or the uh, aftermarket join head unit. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get started on the reverse camera, because I know that the head unit works, and the reverse camera is the next deal. Uh, so one of these flexible rods is really helpful in getting the wiring fished up here. So you can see I'm running the wiring up here. You can probably see the end of this rod. And I'm running it through the very back over here. And once you kind of get it uh, started, you can slowly fish it up. And I'm going to use two hands for this and then I'll pull this wire up. So I don't drop it in here, but again, these these rods make it pretty easy to be able to pull your wiring slowly up and into the uh, 
the head unit compartment. So while we're also running the reverse camera wiring, we're also gonna pull up the front camera wiring. I have an idea what's gonna work with this, but again, we're gonna use the same method of pulling it from up in this corner using my flexible rod, which is already over there. You can see it in that corner right there. So I'm just gonna open the flexible rod, grab these wires and pull them through. All right, got the reverse camera wire ran over uh, on the top over here, out of the way of the parking brake, which barely even works, out of the way of the brake pedal, out of the way of gas pedal. Coming down right over here, you can see this black loom wire coming over here. I found where my plug is. Um, you see that hole missing? So that is the rubber gasket right here. Punched a hole in it running all the wires through gonna put these wires through the hole drop them out the bottom and then pull the slack out back towards the reverse tail light all right here we are looking at the wiring for the reverse camera i'm going to show you guys a couple different ways to set it up or right, pretty much just explain to you how this works so first off we have the ground this is the black wire right here the ground will go to somewhere like this bumper bracket right here that's sanded off and painted and it is good right there. But you need a good ground. Second, we're going to have the power wire, which is this red wire right here. I have it wired up. This is the driver's side rear tail light. This is to the blue and red wire. This will tell you this is what triggers reverse. So. On one end, we have this red wire hooked up to the blue and red here. We have the black ground. And then going over to, ow, going over to the head unit, we'll just cut right there. And then coming over to the head unit, we are gonna have the red wire on the back. So the red wire from the reverse camera to the back on the, uh, on the head unit. Important note. The only way you're gonna get this to work, what I spent all day yesterday trying to figure out, is if you come into your settings here, you go to your display, reversing camera system is CVBSN. Okay, so normally when you go to look it up, it's gonna look like this. If you do not scroll up, you will, you will miss it. I didn't scroll up, but now, I found it, and when I go into reverse, that blue and red wire triggers the red wire, which connects to the back right over here, which tells the head unit you're in reverse, so it turns on the camera. So what I want to do is I want my full time uh, being able to look out the rear camera. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing the red wire, to the back i'm gonna pull a signal a 12 volt from the red wire from an accessory wire on the head unit i'm gonna wire up the purple wire to the back and the purple wire where the blue and red wire is in the driver's side tail light so hopefully that makes sense i'll show you guys once i get it all wrapped up all right so here we go i'm going to show you guys again so we have the back wire from the joining to the purple wire on the tailgate camera. Then we have off the red wire from my head unit, I spliced in the red wire from the tailgate camera. This end right here goes to my front camera, and then this goes to the rear camera. So this way, I can go in my apps and I can hit AR camera. This is my front camera, which is down here. So. As you can see, if I take this camera and I move it around, you know, you can see the front camera is working. And then I can also come over here and I can hit rear and I have my rear camera. But not only that, since my purple wire is spliced into the blue and red on the tail light, which is the trigger wire, which tells the head unit, hey, you're in reverse. Now, when I go into reverse, put my foot on the brake and I cycle it, into reverse it goes to my reverse camera immediately then put it back in drive and it goes back to whatever it was doing before so this is the ultimate way i have my rear camera 
my front camera put in reverse and I have my reverse camera. That is how to hook up the tailgate camera on a drawing head unit and that rear tailgate camera that I bought. This is the ultimate way. Nobody shows you how to do the wiring like this. Holy crap. And especially telling you to click the CVS, um, the most important part right here, because you, you can hook everything up right. And unless you select this style reversing camera, it does not matter. So again, CV, CVBSN. That is the only reversing camera system out of all these that is going to work. Make sure you select that. All right, got the wiring all nice and cleaned up for the rear view camera. Now I'm going ahead and getting the microphone ready. So for the microphone, I'm gonna run mine probably somewhere up here. I'll see where it mounts best. Somewhere out of the way though, or maybe in this corner right over here. So since I'm driving a lot and I wanna actually be able to talk to people. So these are two 10 millimeter bolts that are behind these little covers. Just grab a plastic trim tool and pull these out. And this piece will slowly wiggle loose. Be careful of the airbag. And then it will slide out towards you. And you can pull this whole piece out. Just finished up wiring the microphone. I actually chose to throw it in this spot, which I think is gonna work pretty well for me because this is my view when driving. So over here was kind of obtrusive. I was seeing it in my uh, line of sight, but over here, I don't think I'm gonna notice it at all. This is how I see when I'm sitting in the truck. So it's just barely sticking out right there. Plus if I have passengers, they're gonna be able to also speak and the audio will get picked up pretty well. The spot right here is almost on this little divot in the headliner. You'll be able to see it pretty well when you go to install it if you choose the same spot but it's on a divot a little cutout right here and it just clipped on right over uh, with a little bit of uh, finagling but overall really happy with that spot all right next up we're gonna have this 4g antenna if you want to install this you can i am going to pass because i don't know what i would do with it then we're gonna have this GPS antenna. Now this does not have 3M tape on it, but I would advise putting 3M tape on this and then mounting it somewhere. Just because this would be one of those things that would rattle in the back of the dash when you turn like something like that. And it would get really annoying. So I'm gonna put 3M tape on this. And then honestly, anywhere is a good spot for something like this. I'm probably gonna go back where there's no metal above it. So, uh, maybe on the, the corner over here or something like that, just out of the way. Uh, I don't want to undo this cable because this is a long cable to undo. So we're just going to try and mount it somewhere close. And then one of the last things that we attach, putting the head unit in. So again, 3M tape on the back side of this thing. Normally people mount this thing right in the front, but I, I don't really need this. But we're just going to put it on here just because. All right, next up to get the handle installed, we're gonna go ahead and pull off this plate right here, T30s. Go ahead, pull all these T30s out. All right, then we're gonna have these little clips right here. This is what opens the tailgate. You're gonna have two of them. You're gonna pretty much just, there's little tabs right here that you're gonna separate and then push it off the bar. So this one goes out that way. And then this one also goes out that way. So uh might need two hands for this don't know if i'm gonna get it with one finger but yeah these are gonna come off all right once you got these we can kind of move them out of the way just get them disconnected there's two more clips right here where they're kind of stuck in so we'll just go like that gently pry on this one and then set that over there too so we're gonna go ahead and do, I think, two tens, and then this entire piece should drop out. All we need to do here is swap over the lock cylinder onto the new handle. So two tens. Just kidding, they're eights, two eights. And then this will come right off. All right, so we can see here with the locks side by side, and this is face down on a microfiber because the camera lens might scratch if it was on the Linex here. 
uh, we just kind of need to undo this little clip right here and then swap over the lock assembly onto the new one and that's going to be it i can tell that they're different orientations already this one is going up this one is going down not sure if that matters but we're going to stick with the oem orientation and if i think the oem clip is better i'll swap the oem clip over as well so this clip i'm just going to pry on it with a flat head um, maybe use a pair of dykes or something to help me out and then we'll pull the lock assembly out so here we have the lockout. This is the orientation that's going to sit in here. I can tell that this clip, which is the new clip, is not as the same quality as the old clip. So I'm going to reuse this. I'm just going to set this piece inside of here. This should be over here. Then we're going to take the clip and put it back over with the prongs facing up. So what we're going to do is we're going to route this cable underneath through one of these holes and we're gonna come out to this hole. Now, don't go through this hole, your spare tire uh, rod is gonna go in here when you get a flat. So if you go through here, it might be a pain. So I'm gonna say, I'm probably gonna come out this one right here and then do a little clip over here. So the wire loom always stays high, high and tight. And then I'll come over here or something like that. This is a rain, uh, it's a rain hole. So for drain water. So we're gonna come out probably here and go here, or you can come out here and go here. Either way, super easy. You can see all your options. Just get it to this hole. All right, so here's the full video of the reverse camera installed. And you have to see my wiring zip tied up here. So it's out of the way of the latch assembly. Goes through here, little clip right here. Wrong size clip, but I'll fix that later. Runs through that area. <laughs> Then coming down here, you can see where the wire comes in, runs across. Then it goes to, uh, it attaches to this side where I have my ground. I'll also have my blue and red tap right here that's shielded. And then all the slack is zip tied up top. And then that wire, all the extra zip tied right there. And then it runs all the way over and it is good to go. That's pretty much it. All right, so it's time to wire the front camera. We need to get this wire over here. There is this port right here. And <clears throat> this is a grommet to the engine bay. And I know, bear with me, there's no better way for me to do this, but you can actually push the wire through the bottom area you can see how there's the normal ec wires going up top there and then on the bottom there's this separate hole and this was designed for pretty much wires and if we come and look in the actual engine bay it's gonna look like this you'll see that port itself and on the bottom right over let's see if i can Get this over right over here uh, of course well but underneath those wires you're gonna see that little nipple that sticks out slit that nipple that sounds horrible but literally slit the nipple and push the wire through it will come through all right we have the wire pulled through this is for the front camera and once the tip starts sticking out on the grommet in the corner right there you want to pull it through this part can help if you have two people one person kind of pushing it through the back with either like a flathead screwdriver or something not too sharp but something that can kind of just get an edge right here and push through and then one person once the tip sticks out pinch the tip and pull it through uh, this wire is too short to mount the camera where i'd like somewhere in the center here or uh to be honest i would really like it like right here or on the pro grills right in the middle or up top or something like that but the wire is too short so we're going to bundle it up and email join to see if i can get a longer wire i'm also going to let them know for people installing front cameras that the wire is too short all right so we're also going to be installing one of these uh this port's going to sit right inside of this dash piece right here and I just figure, you know what, this is nice to add. And so this is gonna go off the cigarette lighter. 
uh, we're gonna tap into that power. Um, the link for this, of course, and everything else is in the description. But we need to take out this piece right here and I finagled with it for a little bit to understand how it worked and I got it for you. So we're gonna have this Phillips head inside of here. Then we're gonna also have this 10 millimeter, which is gonna go under right there in that hole, 10 millimeter. Then we're gonna pull the dash out just a little bit like this and we're gonna reveal another bolt hole right there. And that's gonna have another Phillips head. Now this piece can come out and you can undo the wiring, uh, the plugs for the cigarette lighter and then plug this adapter in in its place. This is pretty much a jumper. So the stock cigarette lighter plug is gonna go into this uh, female end right here. And then the male end is gonna go back into the cigarette lighter. And then we're gonna run the wiring for this and just place it inside of this cubby. So again, feed, or not again, I didn't tell you this yet, but feed this through first, because if not, it's probably not gonna work out well for you because um, there is no plug on the back. So feed this in through the hole first and then do everything. All right, and now we have the cable plugged in. Make sure you seat this plug all the way. You have to push it in a good bit. I would hold the cigarette lighter from the front and then push it in through the back so that way you can hear it visibly. It won't, or audibly, it won't click in. It'll kind of like thud in. So just an FYI. I'm gonna go ahead and put this panel back together. Then we can start throwing the interior pieces back. We're also gonna have this port that I bought as well. This is uh, again from Amazon, links are in the description. And this is gonna run to the wired car play on the head unit. And I purposely chose something like this cause it's a lot cleaner than running a cable and just have it dangling uh, in one of the empty slots here. So we're gonna throw this cable uh, in the spot Next to the aux, I honestly don't know why I'm keeping the aux because I will never use it, but we're just gonna keep it there for now. Um, eh, we might even pull it out, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put the cable there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my bendable rod and I'm gonna feed through the extension adapter and I'm gonna feed this through. So again, we have slack and the, and the HVAC controls when we need to undo it. So this extension is gonna plug into the wired CarPlay adapter, and then we're gonna feed this into the back of the head unit. Again, this is so we have extra slack. It is long cables, but I would rather have the ability to pull the head unit and pull the HVAC controls in and out pretty easily without getting binded up. So this will help out for sure. Okay, uh, the SD card, it actually goes right in here. So this screen will pop off. Um, it's like two levers on the back of the screen. I can't film this and show you guys, but there's two levels, two levers on the back of the screen, which will unclip this. And then these are just four clips from the screen that hold it into the box itself. So had it installed in the truck now for a couple days i wanted to do a last uh, update and overview on the head unit tell you guys some things that i figured out already first thing at night it is very bright the head unit is too bright uh i could it was just so distracting so come in here in your system hit 8888 come in here to your factory settings screen brightness adjustable range drop your brightness man i put it to 28 and now i can see great uh, second thing, the reverse camera at night, it actually looks pretty decent. This is not bad. Uh, the, the camera, when you first install it, looks terrible. So hold the screen and you have adjustment settings that you should uh, most definitely change so that you can actually see stuff. Um, if not, then if you leave it how it is, it looks terrible. So you need to adjust the camera settings like I did here. Other than that, guys, this is a fantastic quality head unit for the price. It works great. It's fast. My speakers sound better than they did stock. I, I sounds like I have mid bass now. Um, I'm very happy with it. I don't have to crank the volume up too high for the loudness of the head unit uh, to work. Some of these cheap Android head units, you have to crank them because they have no DSP and it just sounds terrible. 
these honestly sound great. They function, the head unit functions great. I can't say enough good things about it. So only time will tell. I'll keep driving with it and see if there's any things that come up, but people can hear me while I take calls. The reverse camera works great. The front, front camera will work. I'm getting an extension wire for it. Apple CarPlay works great. It's responsive. It's quick. Even on wireless CarPlay, it is super fast. So no complaints here for me. I really like it. I'd recommend it. Joying, thank you for sending this head unit out. Glad I got a full install video for you guys. If you enjoyed, thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. See you guys in the next one.